G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. And in today's video, we are going to be going through 2023's best and fairest winners for each club and putting them into a tier list. This is tricky because we're talking about a list of 18 players that were, in theory, the best player for their club this year. And that means we're trying to split hairs between some truly elite players of the competition. And I've tried to break it into four categories and this is going to be very divisive, I'm sure, but still worth having a crack. So the four categories I've got are superstar, elite, very good and good, okay? So again, how do you split superstar and elite? I think you can be elite if you're one of the best players in the comp in that position. Uh, a superstar is probably where you're a bit more transcendent. Um, and that probably does allude a little bit to legacy, but not too far into the past. We wanna talk about how good these players are right now. And uh, you know, finding players in this list that are just merely good is probably gonna be tricky but let's have at it anyway. Before I get into the video, if you could do me a favor and hit that subscribe button to find more AFL content as we get closer to the 2024 season. That's been a wonderful period of growth. I really appreciate all of you. And if you are enjoying the content, it would really mean a lot to me if you did subscribe, so thank you. Cool, all right, let's start dividing these players up. This is gonna be tricky. I can feel the hate comments coming already, but uh, let's find one for each category. That's usually how I like to start these. Uh, I'm gonna put Bonzo Pelli in Superstar. Uh, again, I just think he is a transcendent player. Uh, one of the best players of his generation. I honestly think he's that good. Uh, just without the real, you know, silverware, he hasn't won like a Brownlow or anything like that, but I think he's the best player in the game. Sue me for that opinion if you like, um, except don't, I have no money. All right, who's somebody that is just merely elite? Um, that sounds really disrespectful, but I'm gonna probably put Jordan Dawson in this category. He's not a superstar, but he's, he's a damn good player and all Australian this year and on an upward trajectory, I think absolutely counts as a lead. I think he, he's better than very good. Uh, let's talk about someone who is just very good. Um, again, this sounds very, very disrespectful to some of these players. Maybe Noah Anderson. I think he's a player again on an upward trajectory and probably will move into the elite category. Uh, but had like one really good season where I think he's been really eye-catching. Um, he's quite a young player, really. Like, what is he, 22? Yeah. So we're, we're, I'm trying to rate them on how good they are right now, okay? Rather than, you know, how good Noah Anderson is as a prospect and, and considering all of his potential, I'm going to ignore that a little bit in this video and say he's very good and probably really careering towards that elite category. Uh, whether he becomes a superstar, I probably wouldn't bet on it, but um, those, that is some elite company there. Who is just merely a good player? Now, this might be controversial, and this is why this is tricky, because Harry Sheasel here, I'm gonna put him in good, and I'll explain why. He's only 18, so like, how do you how do you reconcile that? Like, we're comparing him to the other players in the prime. I, I just think Sheasel, for his first season, is probably just a good player. You know, when you factor in, they played him in a position in particular that allowed him a little bit of freedom, a little bit of a lack of the same accountability, and he absolutely smashed it, and I do think Sheasel's an absolute star. Uh, that being said, the 18-year-old version of Sheasel, uh, you know, he probably wouldn't move into other positions and have quite the same impact. What is his potential? I think upper end of elite. I don't know if I'd put him in superstar, but, you know, maybe could he have a career like Toby Green? I would put Toby Green as superstar. You know, that's probably the best case scenario for Sheasel because I do see him as a forward midfielder in time rather than simply a, a running halfback distributor but he smashed that role. So onwards and upwards for Sheasel, but as of right now, I think there are still levels to this, and I think Sheasel isn't quite there yet, understandably so, for an 18-year-old. Zach Butters, I think he's probably deserves to be better than elite. I think he's top handful of midfielders in the competition. I think that probably puts him in superstar. It's a tricky one. I, I do think there are still certainly some levels between Bont. I think there's levels between, or at least a level between Bont and then one to Green, and then maybe one to Butters, but then I think Butters is better than some of the other guys are going to put in a lead. But we can move these around. We can move these around. I might move that one. I'm not sure. Okay, who's a lead? I put Zach Merritt. Uh, he came up in another team maker I did recently. And I think elite is about right. You know, just consistently all Australian quality or around the mark. Um, and I think you have to have to back that in. And he does it in a team that, you know, has been up and down around him. So I think he deserves that respect. Absolutely. Who is just very good? Sounds... Again, I, I hate splitting hairs between some very, very good players. This could almost just be three tiers because splitting very good and good seems harsh because I'm inclined to put, I'm inclined to put some players in very good that could be elite. Oh, what am I doing here? You know what? I'm going to make an amendment here, actually, just getting on a little tangent here. I'm going to move Butters into elite only because he's just really hit that standard pretty consistently, maybe the last two years, certainly in 2023. Uh, but I'm going to put Petrarca in superstar because I do think 
the, I actually think these are the best three players in the competition. Petrarco, Green, and Bont. So I think they deserve their own tier in this particular video. Um, so some other elite players. Again, we're going to go Harris Andrews in elite. Uh, yeah, you know, in a previous video, I think I put him top tier. But I think in this particular analysis, I'm going to separate it with slightly different different lines there. Probably Wietering. Could Wietering be elite or is he very good? I think he's probably between the two. I think he's a level below Harris Andrews. Um, and, you know, probably just a matter of time before he wins an All-Australian. So I'd probably say probably very good, but he's on the verge, if that makes sense. Hopefully he can get over that calf complaint sooner rather than later. Tim Kelly, I think, is, is an interesting one where you consider... The, the, the pool of elite midfield talent is so much higher. You know, I, I think he's a good player and are probably a little bit underrated. I think people kind of assume West Coast is bad, therefore Tim Kelly's bad. I, I think Tim Kelly's actually improved as a footballer, but a little bit wavered with his, his, um, his radar, with his kicking. I'm going to put him in good. I think that's good. Like, we're talking about splitting some very good players here, generally speaking, and I think he's probably on the lower end of the spectrum rather than the higher end of the spectrum. I think that's fair to suggest. Where does guys like Jack Sinclair feature? You know, I think he's a terrific player and, you know, probably elite in the sense that he's one of the best players in the, in the competition for his role. However, however, look at the players I've got in elite. Dawson, Merritt, Butters, Andrews. I would probably justifiably put Sinclair a little bit below that. So maybe don't get caught up in the elite very good thing as I, as I say this, like... You know, I just kind of whip those up. I'm more focused on the on the brackets and the tiers between these guys. And I think Sinclair is probably below your Butters, Merritts, Andrews, and probably just in that very good category. But technically elite if you compare against other halfbacks. I know there's, there's so much nuance to this. Dacos, again, I'll probably put in this category again. Like I said, technically is, an, is he elite wingman? Yeah, probably. I mean, he was an Australian wingman this year. But again, I, I just think in terms of the resume over the last few seasons. We can go back a little bit. Dacos has probably just hit that level, in my opinion, winning their best and fairest. But, uh, you know, is he... I think he's below Butters and Andrews. And Merritt's probably just been consistently good longer. That's probably how I'm going to separate it. Oh, this is tricky. Tom Stewart, this might seem generous, but I think he probably goes into superstar, to be honest. I think unbelievable player considering... What is it? Five out of the last six years, he's won All-Australian. and He's not slowing down. He, I think he was Geelong's highest ball winner this year as well. I know they had injuries to their midfield, but I do think he probably transcends some of those other names, I think. I think that's fair to suggest. Get Errol Goulden, Will Day, Tim Taranto, and Caleb Jerome. I've left all the hardest ones to the last. That was that was kind of deliberate. Um, where does Errol Goulden fit? You know, he's probably up there with Day Cost. He probably... So I actually think... I can see people saying, no, he's better than Dacos, and there'll be others saying no, and it probably depends what cl club you go for. I think it'd probably take him over Dacos, but marginally. And I think he's on the come up. I think he's on the come up. So I'd probably put him there with the full expectation that maybe in 12 months' time, I think we move him up a, a, a category. Like, if he does it again, I think that's probably the clear distinction. I think it's probably just a little bit of longevity with the, the guys above. Dawson was a very good halfback and moved into the midfield. Merritt's just been there for ages. Andrews has been top tier for ages. Butters probably of a shorter period of time, but his top end has been better. So that's probably how I'm rationalizing all those differences. Will Day. Will Day's a tricky one. I think you'd have to put him below these names here in Anderson, Wietering, Sinclair, Dacos, and Goulden. Like if that's the tier above, then Will Day's probably not quite there yet. That being said, massive top end potential, I think. Certainly elite potential. Uh, and when I say elite, I mean up there with these guys. I think that is his top end. But the, has he earned... Is he you know is he up there with Gordon and Dacos and Sinclair? I, I, I think he's a little bit behind that group. A little bit behind. But again, like look at the, the quality of the, the names down here. Caleb's are wrong. Where does he rank? I think probably, again, in this tier here. You know, I almost want to change this. Like I, I realize you can make a case that it, so many of these guys are elite for what they do. So bear with me on that. However, Caleb Sarong, I think, is an absolute jet, to be honest. On the young end, I think this year was his first All-Australian jumper, so kind of just cracked that category. I think he's better than Tim Kelly. I think he's clearly a better player at the moment than Will Day. 
Uh, that being said, is he does he deserve the same ranking as a Butters or um, or a Merritt? I think I think he's a little bit shy of that. And Tim Taranto is hard because in some aspects he is so good, you know, consistent, versatile, balanced, but disposal efficiency of fifty nine percent really does really bring him back to the pack. Uh, it really does. And I almost want to put him in good. Because I don't think he's as good. I would take Caleb Sarong. I would take Dacos. I would take Goulden. And I would take Anderson above him. And maybe that's harsh. He's probably... Probably deserves to be higher than this. I don't know. This is just my opinion. At the end of the day, that is all I can offer you. So, let me know in the comments what you think of this ranking. Again, maybe don't get fixed up too much in this particular video about what the words say. So think about the tiers. And I think that is the way I'm going to go with it. And I'm happy with that. So let me know what you thought of my reasonings and rationale. Can't wait to lose subscribers over this. But otherwise, I appreciate you watching. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.